Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and we are joined today by our good friends... Jill Donitis And Joe O'Gorman. Thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So check that out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And we have all of the previous episodes from our shows on YouTube. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Troll Killer, uh, anything from Dungeons, as well as the new ones from Shadows. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. We are very pleased to say that this episode of Shadows of, uh, of the Untold Tales of Drakenheim has been sponsored by the amazing Easy Roller Dice Company and their new Color Spray Dice Kickstarter. Uh, Easy Roller Dice does super affordable and super qual uh, high quality as well as colorful dice, and they've just started their new Kickstarter, uh, which is great if you want to build up a big collection of dice uh, on a lightweight budget. One of my favorite things I ever got from them was a pound of dice for like 20 bucks. Super <laughs> awesome. Their Kickstarter oh, yeah. is, is great, super colorful dice uh, as well. Uh, my favorite thing that Easy Roller Dice does is actually their dice trays, which I've been using for a few years now. Sebastian oh, Crow had his own them. dice tray, and Wilhelm has his own dice tray. Uh, apparently, I just really like buying stuff for every character I have, but their dice trays are great. They have little little compartments to hold all your dice in and a place to roll them. It's it's awesome. Uh, it's day one of their Kickstarter uh, right now during the live airing of the of this. So if you head on over to EasyRollerDice.com, check that out. Uh, I think they're doing an you get an extra D twenty if you bid on if you back their Kickstarter on day one or something like that. So check that out. Uh, EasyRollerDice.com. And with that, I think we will dive in. To catch you all up, these are the untold tales of Drakenheim. Um, given the um, given the current global situation, we are unable to play Dungeons and Dragons together in person. So we have been playing together online uh, using Roll20 and various video chats. And we've been using uh, the untold tales of Drakenheim to put shadows on hold for a little bit just so that we can get uh used to how to play D, &D online because we've never done that before at all so in uh in interest of doing that uh while we do think that we will be heading back to shadows of drakenheim shortly um we still have to cover the final of the five factions of drakenheim so with our untold tales we have covered so far the hooded lanterns the amethyst academy the queen's men the followers of the falling fire and a bit brief sidetrack back to the shadows crew but now finally we are joining the silver order to find out how their untold tales uh will bring where where they will go in drakenheim as paladins of the silver order um so again th these will be a one or two parts so this is the first part of that series uh in terms of spoilers uh for the main show dungeons of drakenheim um, if you, uh, the Silver Order was introduced pretty early in the, the series. If you've watched as far as episode 20, you will know everything you need to know to get the gist of how things are going tonight. It's not going to go too much further, uh, than that. This, the, are the events of this little sidetrack, uh, probably occur sometime after, uh, episode 20. 20 ish maybe no further than episode 25 ish kind of indiscriminate in in terms of its timing so um not too much in terms of spoiling for the main plot but as always there are things that our main characters never discovered that are revealed in these episodes that they can, so they can be a quite fun insider look at things that were never explored in the main campaign with that shall we dive into the untold tales of drakenheim indeed awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Yep. 
Outside the walls of Drakenheim, several miles away from that cursed city, a new camp has sprung up. Around a wooden palisade is a fortress camp erected by the Silver Order of Illyria, the flaming sword and shield of the Hierarch of the Church of the Sacred Fire. Here, these brave Illyrians have gathered to purge the evils of Drakenheim and restore justice, peace, and purity to this cursed and fallen city. Their camps building up, setting up the eerie of their flying cavalry, their stables of their numerous glittering horses, Weapon shops, campsites all around are all abuzz with activity, for the Silver Order will be mobilizing soon to march upon Drakenheim in their first forays against the city, now perhaps with newfound allies in the Hooded Lanterns, the former guardians of Drakenheim and Westermar proper. But the Silver Order still has its own agenda within Drakenheim. And on this dawn, the Lord Commander, the, the, the Knight, sorry, the Knight Captain, <laughs> Theodore Marshall, has called up three of his swiftest riders for a mission of great importance. There at the command tent step forward three valiant soldiers before Theodore Marshall, who himself still in his plate armor, his eye patch over his right eye, his hair a tussled mess, stubble coming in as he pours over the maps of Westmar and Drakenheim as the first of the three step into the tent. Is it me? Yeah. All right. So into the tent walks a very tall human paladin man uh he's about six feet a little higher a little more than six feet like six three six four uh clad in lots of metal armor with gold uh kind of filigree around the uh around the like trim of the armor he has a big shield and carries at his side a flail uh that looks like it's seen some battles. He has a um, uh, kind of uh, the symbol of a sun on his chest and on his belt, a flame that represents the holy fire that guides his actions. This is Austin Edwards, the Conquest Paladin. Lieutenant Austin Edwards. Welcome back. Good to see you. Glad you could come and make it so early. We got a mission of great import. Are the others on the way? Of course, sir. Stepping through the tent comes the next night. Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. um, in walks in a slightly stockier build uh, of the, the paladin Wyatt Wilkins. Wyatt is a, a bit of a, a muscular sense kind of guy. He comes in with kind of a cocky grin on his face, looking around, seeing who's here to show off a little bit, flexes slightly as he comes in to, to show, show the guns. Um, Wyatt is uh, a, a gentleman of sorts, but has a mean streak behind him. So he can put on a good face, but don't get on his bad side. Well, White, glad you could make it. You're going to be riding shortly. Don't kill your horse this time. No guarantees. You know that there's only, you know, one White Wilkins, and got to make sure there, there can be plenty more cinnamons in the world, plenty more steeds that I can summon. But if I peril, you know, perish, then what, what good am I to the, the order? None. That's what I say. Well, 
Every time you ask for a horse to follow you into battle, it ne don't ever come back there, Wyatt. You just be glad that the flame keeps sending them to you. Well, when in doubt, I can make sure I find my own steed if I need it, but Cinnamon the Fifth will be plenty excited to come into battle with me today. <laughs> right. Well, our last valiant warrior joins us as well. Though he hasn't taken his oaths, I'm sure you'll find him an uplifting force to ride with you today. The the mood darkens as the as the the saloon tent door swings and it pans from his <laughs> his boots with his uh his stirrups and they and they and, and, and it pans up uh these these wide flaring um leather uh riding crops to uh to half plate armor uh uh given the colors of the of the order of the paladins uh gold and and silver and there's a blue guitar a bright blue guitar strewn on his back uh and and, and a hat not captain and it's buddy knox the buddy uh, knox. valor bard buddy knox good to have you back out here such an uplifting presence that you bring to us that, that sweet song of faith on your lips, the string of them guitars. And we need a little bit of uh, your special talents as well. These two brutes going forward on, on a mission like this, they might be able to use a little bit of your touch as well. I hope you're to. Brought, you're probably <laughs> buddy. I hope to fill, fill our hearts with, with spirits and our. Our stomach's just as full. Well, high time I tell y'all while I gathered you here to this morning. We got a mission of importance to send out to you. Now, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm not sending you into the city yet. What? What is it, Night Captain? Well, the city's where we belong, sir. Now, the best I, challenges and best darkness is that we can overcome. We came here, Drakenheim, looking for a fight. I know you came looking for a fight, and I know you came here looking to do what's right as well. But you got to understand, it ain't just what's in that city that scares me. It ain't just why that, that, that city is just one place. But you got to remember why we came here in the first place. Because what's in that city ain't going to stay in that city very long. Is it? No, hmm. sir. Now we're all fixing for a mighty fine push up against them walls on Temple Gate with our new friends. Seems like the Hooded Lanterns are amiable to working with us for the time being. They got a couple of them that uh, aren't part of their organization proper. Seem to be stirring up a little bit of chaos of their own, but... Might be able to work with them in the short term. Of course, once we're in the city proper, we'll have a better sense of how bad it's gotten, but I've been getting reports from riders that I've been sending out on the roads. They say that once about every fortnight or so, a bunch of wagons come rolling out the south ward of the city. Wagons coming out of the city. Now, they usually leave round dawn, and at first, our riders couldn't make any trace of them. Turned out, they were looping back down up north. Where they're going? Well, who knows where, but they're making a hell of a pace of it. Wagons being drawn up, stagecoach style, four horses hitched, full break. Big iron chests covered in a black old canvas, hoods drawn up around their heads. Now, Ophelia's consulted with the flame. She thinks that another one will be making a break for it today, this morning. I reckon it's some of them bandit bastards making a run of demon stones off to find a buyer. But I'm just as worried as it could be some of our new friends, the Hooded Lanterns, too. 
never really know where they're getting all the money that keeps their operation going. In any case, I want you to run them down. Now, Captain, I'm all for following orders, but you're sure that the three of us, I mean, the two of us and I suppose Buddy, are better suited for this than fighting with you at Temple Gate. Now, hold it one minute, Austin. I've been on as many campaigns as as, as you here. I, I've been fighting with the Night Captain all around Illyria. I've seen you, you fight, Buddy. Of course, they need someone to tell the tales of the greatness of the Paladins. Is fire coming along, no? Now, look, we aren't going to make you be making that offensive anytime soon. So I reckon you're going to have lots of glory for yourselves when we go in there proper. But I need someone right now that I can trust to get this done. It's not enough just to run them down. I want to find out where they're going with it. What, who are they selling it to? Somebody wants it. Now, I would think them mages, we know that they've been interested in it, but we ain't never seen them broker a deal or doing anything with it or taking it in a wagon outside the city. At least not that we've seen any of them purple robes or anything around. So who is it? Where are they going with it? What are they doing with it? We got to know. Because if we, we can go in there with fire and brimstone, topple this whole city to the ground, but it ain't, ain't going to make a lick of difference if even one speck of them cursed stones make it outside these walls. You understand? Of course, sir. All right. Now, we reckon they'll be leaving any minute. Now, I want you to head up, take the north roads. We think they might be heading towards Brocken Hollow or Velberg. Both them towns are abandoned. Not a soul living in them at all anymore. It's possible that they could be going further up north. If so, wagon wheels on the roads? Well, it's raining all the time. You'll notice them in the tracks. You best follow them as best you can. Catch up to them. And then, well... I want you to take one of these with you. He opens up a chest, pulls off a canvas, and inside is a hammer made of this bluish iron. Cold iron. Now, when you channel your faith in the flame through this weapon of cold iron, and you bring this hammer down upon one of them cursed stones, that delirium stuff, smashes it right to pieces. Not a trace, just dust. Nothing else. You find any of it. You take this hammer and you do what you gotta do. But, make sure you find out where they're coming from. And once you know where they are, you follow up. You find out where they're going, and you take them down. It's probably going further out from there. But you crush a few roaches, hopefully they won't come back. Thing I find with roaches is they always come back. Well, then we're going to keep stomping them. Yeah, look it. As long as there's a rotten carcass here, the maggots, the roaches, the flies, they're always going to keep coming back. But we can't let them keep stinging, biting, feeding, and festering until the time that we actually get to do all the work here. Understand? And if there's anyone getting a little bit of whiff of interest in coming around here, best we get rid of them before it's too late. Consider it done. Now, I expect you won't find much help from the locals around here. But yeah, some of them are faithful. Some of them might not be. But you ain't got to worry about any hooded lanterns or anyone else. As far as I'm concerned, we're the last law there is out here. So you do what you gotta do in the name of the flame. Always. Yes, sir. Whatever needs to be done, we will do it if it is in the name of the flame. And I think 
This is for the best of this cursed city if we get rid of this demon rock. Agreed. Now you ride. You ride like the light. I'll go get Juniper. Cinnamon the fifth, where are you at? <laughs> Nilly. Now, for the purposes of uh, this uh, episode, uh, I have granted you all the mounted combatant feat as a bonus feat. <laughs> so we will be using that as as well. Um, and uh, and then from there. Uh, you can summon up your steeds. Uh, tell us, what kind of steed are you bestride? <laughs> I am bestride a beautiful white horse with a flowing blonde mane named Juniper. Fastest horse in all the land. Been with me in every battle I've ever been in and has stood by my side. I trust that horse more than I trust any man or woman. A steed is named Cinnamon for the reddish hue of their coat. They have almost like a blondish mane on them, and they're white as can be. But you know what? Going into battle, I, I take something that's just as fierce as uh, as a uh, attitude as I'm bringing. So we work together pretty well. But <laughs> it is the fifth Cinnamon, <laughs> and uh, old Nelly. Uh, she's a, she's a Mustang. She's got, she's a brown with white or white with brown, however you see it. Uh, beautiful horse. Been with me my whole life. All right. So as you three amigos hop upon your steeds and ride out from Camp Dawn up to the northern roads, as dawn cusps and breaks proper on the day clouds ringing out overhead but as you get further and further away from the city the, they break somewhat and there's just an inkling of the blue sky high up overhead rays of sunlight coming down on the day you ride hard you ride long and it's not before too long too too long that the walls of drakenheim and that awful castle fade off into the distance but as you do the, as you ride along the musty dusty mu uh, at some points dusty but at most points pretty muddy roads the broken cobblestones of what was once the uh, thoroughfares that led into this, the city passing along farmsteads long abandoned and dilapidated and dying vegetation. Everything, all the grass is this sickly green gray. All the trees, their leaves are slowly falling off or whatever still stood within them, just sapping quite out. There are these cedar trees in the distance that their needles are turning brown. The long abandoned fields and farms, the fields themselves laying fallow. But, as you ride and you ride, you can each roll me a d6. Two. Six. One. Okay. <laughs> Buddy, don't get us into any trouble back there. What's this goo? Buddy <laughs> and Austin, I each want you to make me perception checks. I got a 12 for perception. I got a 22. Okay, that's something else. <laughs> Alrighty. See you coming a mile away. I'm too busy looking Austin. back at you. <laughs> As you scan the horizon down the winding road, you see a small cloud of dust. And just off, maybe... No more than half a mile down ahead as you crest over the next ridge. You can see it. A stagecoach pulled by four black horses. Covered over with black canvas as well. It's moving at 
uh, it's making a pretty good clip. It isn't moving flat out, but it's kicking up a lot of mud and dust in the area. As you look forward, though, buddy, you can spy out. Someone's been following you. There's four, maybe five riders. They've been telling you just on the edge of the horizon, maybe for the past hour. What will you do? My friends, we got company up ahead. It looks like our target is in sight. Hey, Austin, why? Eyes front, but keep your wits about you. We got some, we got a tail that isn't cinnamons. <laughs> or Nellies. Or, 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 or ju ju Juniper? Is it Juniper? Buddy. I swear to God. What I'm trying to say is got half a dozen coming up on our rear. Now question is, do we stop back and take care of them or do we head on ahead and figure out our target before they can catch up with us? Well, the old reclaimer's looking for a fight and I, I place my hand on the hilt of my, uh, my flail. We got so, can't let the night captain down. We're after that stagecoach. You heard him. Nothing gets out of this city. So you think we should make a run for the stagecoach and just forget about our tail? The tail will come to us. That's how tails work. <laughs> what I do know is I don't know where these fellows behind us have been or what they've done. None of my business. What I do know is ahead of us is some dirty work against the light. I say we go for our target. All right. Wyatt, try to keep Cinnamon the Fifth alive. What happened to Cinnamon the Fourth was, was not good. I'm, I personally miss Cinnamon the Second. Cinnamon the Second was your best Cinnamon. <laughs> Listen, if Cinnamon the Fifth can't hold up, then it wasn't the best cinnamon, and we'll get a new one. <laughs> Let's go. And I whack the back of my horse. <laughs> and, I, and I'm right like by the you. wind, boys. All right. You spur on the horses and ride down the ridge along the road towards the stagecoach. As you do, you hear a whistle and a cracking of a whip as the stagecoach clips into high gear and the horses whinny in the wind and there's a rustling and a rumbling as the stagecoach moves into full full speed ahead as you follow up towards it you can see behind you thundering forward are the other riders several of them on are on horseback but one of them is riding on a massive gigantic boar covered in plated armor as it rushes towards you, howling out at the top of its lungs, swinging a mace around his head. Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, boy. How far back are the ones behind us? The, the tail? Um, I'll tell you once we get all the initiative in. Okay. Well, I just rolled a 20, so that, that's <laughs> going to be a 24 for initiative. Rolled an 18. Uh, 22. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are the fastest riders. Channeling uh, Pluto Jackson. We were inspired by his leadership. <laughs> okay. Wyatt, I'm glad to be riding with you again. Buddy, stay behind me. Alrighty. Are you just, you're going to be another tail. I, I, I won't. 
You're behind me, you big bully. <laughs> Buddy, I'm trying to say I'll protect you if you stay to, behind me. Oh, I'm trying to name my horse. Sorry. There's danger behind us, too, so... Well, then you get on the other side of Buddy and make sure nothing bad happens to him. All he's got with him is a guitar. <laughs> I'm all right. sure the night commander wouldn't have sent him if he wasn't able to hold Yeah, that's all I brought is a then. guitar. Not a lot. Let's bring it up. Whack. Okay. So here's what you're looking at. Here's the road ahead with the three of you over on uh, the one side. Bring you up and over a little bit here. And the stagecoach itself. Now, we're going to assume for the purposes of this battle that everyone is moving flat out and is not stopping or slowing down at all so your mounts are always going to be assuming to moving straight forward so essentially if nobody dashes or disengages or anything like that your position is the same uh overall so if you if you choose to dash uh you will move forward like you'll move forward and whatnot and back the only thing is because everybody is moving flat out Every time you do um, want to have your mount dash to spur forward, I am going to ha have you make a constitution saving throw for your mount. And if you fail, uh, the you won't be able to dash forward, uh, basically representing your mount isn't able to gain their position forward. So you'll stay where, where, where you are, essentially. Okay? So this basically assumes that everybody is moving constantly at the same time. Make sense? Yes. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, buddy, what did you get for initiative? Uh, 22. I got 24, so I think oh. I'm ahead of... Okay. I'm right Let's on go. you, Austin. Yeah. So, if you... Um, you can shift left and right however much you want to, but if you want to go forward, you're going to have to make the constitution check with your mount because that assumes that your mount is dashing if you don't want to go forward from your current position because your mount wants to disengage or dodge or do something else then you don't have to do that but you aren't able to move any far further forward does that make sense yeah as far as behind you um from the distance that they're they're coming the other riders are going to arrive in a, probably three rounds well, all right. All right. Austin, you're first to act. All right, Juniper, you know the drill. We're doing the old stagecoach drill. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to push Juniper uh, to move. If I'm dashing, is that so I can do 40 feet? Uh, I believe your your war horses uh, 60. have a speed 60. of 60. Yep. All right, I'm going to get right up to the stagecoach then, and I'm going to make a constitution check. Yep. Constitution saving throw for the mount. For the mount. Warhorse. Got a 15. All righty. You spur forward, and there there you are. As you come forward um, and closer onto the towards the stagecoach, um, you can see... Ooh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to move you there. Uh, I'm just going to move you a little bit back because you're on the space of the stagecoach there. Fair. Um, what you can see coming at the back of the stagecoach underneath the, the covering, you can see two other figures emerge. One is a, uh, uh, a man with this kind of bedraggled beard and he, and he puts on this pair of goggles and he raises up a huge crossbow beside him is a smaller woman with short hair and she and it looks like she might have a spell on her lips i am going to attempt to leap off of juniper <laughs> onto the stagecoach okay yes it's the old stagecoach drill I'm going to leap right there. Nice. As you leap onto the stagecoach, give me an athletics check. 19. You leap onto the stagecoach and 
you batter against the back and so i'm gonna say that you leap on successfully but you land prone uh on there but you're able to pull your your yourself up in the stagecoach in front of you is a massive iron bound chest and several other crates as you le- leap on um you can hear someone in the front in the front say get rid of them um and the the man be in front of you is quickly lever leveraging the crossbow and aiming it almost to shoot at shoot at you point blank as the woman readies a spell herself what are I, you gonna do? I i rise up to my feet and i look at the man loading the crossbow and i go Hello there. And then I swing my flail around and uppercut him with the flail. Um, hopefully. Okay. 24 to hit. That's a hit. <laughs> All right. Um, and as I'm swinging the flail, uh, you know what? Actually, no, we're not going to do that yet. We're just going to hit him. We're just going to clock him in the, in the face doing six damage okay he takes it on the on the chin and and uh as as the mace grazes across him leaving streaks of blood across his his face and tearing a little little bit of the cartilage on his nose and he glares back at you with it with a wicked grin for my second attack so now i'm swinging the flail and as i'm swinging it i get 22 to hit also a hit and I'm going to use a divine smite. So as I'm swinging the flail, uh, you see it start to glow with radiant energy. And I go, my friend, you better sit down. And I crack him in the face again. So if I'm using, yeah, and that's going to be an extra D8. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Eighteen more damage. Wow. Yeah, it was a good roll. He grits his teeth in pain as the divine energy racks through his his body, and he almost loses his footing for a moment. I raise my shield up, surprised that he hasn't died from two cracks in the head with a flail, <laughs> and I grit my teeth at the two of them. Nice. Buddy Knox, it's your turn. Um... I'm also going to push, uh, come on. Oh, come on, Nilly. And, uh, I'm going to attempt to move up, uh, uh, 60 feet. I get a 13. Um, you spur on, on Nilly, but she'll only be able to move up, up 30 feet forward. Okay. That might be enough. Uh, and, so the 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 short-haired woman uh as i'm riding over over the course of of dirt and trampling hooves i yell looks like you got your hair cut by a hobgoblin and i'm gonna cast tasha's uh, hideous laughter on her okay that is a wisdom saving throw correct yeah dc 15. i get a 21. oh <laughs> she doesn't oh. uh and she yells back, you might want to work on your humor and delivery and timing. Your jokes aren't funny is what I'm saying. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, now, miss, that's, there's no no time for rudeness. And uh, I'm going to give a, uh, a, uh, a bardic inspiration to, um, to Austin. Uh, a D8. D8. Nice. Thank you. And I can add that to... Uh, ooh, you can add it to um, an ability check, an attack roll, a saving throw, or as a reaction on um, on an attack My against AC. you for your AC. Nice. Oh, and also a damage roll. Cool. <laughs> if you want to just make your divine smite a little bit bigger. <laughs> Why not? I turn back and I'm like, I thought it was pretty good, buddy. I got you. Thanks, Austin. I know my I know my audience. <laughs> okay. So the um the stagecoach. So it is it is it continues in, in good pace. So at, at this time, um 
I'm going, uh, you, Kelly, um, Austin, you are on the stagecoach, so you just need to roll me a d6. <laughs> I got a two. Okay. Uh, the stagecoach continues running along steady. Crafty Lil, the mage. She, gr- she grits her teeth and the spell that she was preparing finishes. And as she does so, she raises her fist backwards and she says, get off my coach. And uh, uh, um, although she doesn't have a Southern accent, so, she, so she's not a Lyrian. So she says, get off my coach. And all of a sudden, as she rears back her fist in in place of it, hanging over her, uh, hanging over her head, appears a massive tra- fist made of glowing blue force. Oh Lord! I raise my shield, hopefully. <laughs> and so she, the the hand appears, and the hand co- comes forward to punch. Uh, um, Austin Edwards right in the f- the jaw just as you smashed uh, the first guy in the jaw as well. So um, we need to make an opposed strength check. Ooh. All right. Strength athletics or just strength? It's strength athletics. All right. All right. That could have been a better roll. I got a 12. You can also add a D8 to your <gasps> ability. Yeah, you better add that D8. Uh- <laughs> I I had okay wait I got a 12 I get an 18 um unfortunately you're looking for a 20 oh my god <laughs> uh yeah because I have uh because you're medium or smaller I get advantage on the check um so I uh I push you 20 feet oh. <laughs> Can I catch him on my horse? As I tumble along the ground, can he, like, try to scoop me up? Uh, I'm about 30 feet back. (laughs) You're about 30 feet back? So, yeah. So the hand rears back, and it just punts you off the back of the coach. And you go flying into the dirt below. And I'm going to say that uh, you're going to take some damage as you just rustle along in in the dust behind you. So you're going to take a total of... um, it's going to be 18 points of bludgeoning damage, we'll say, as you get fired off the back Ooh. of the coach. Um, and oh at the start of the next round, I'll, I'll, um, because you're on the ground, basically you're going to zip off 120 feet if you don't get picked up again. So yeah, we'll say that um, um, while you're, you kind of jostle and fall, um, Buddy Knox could, could scoop you up. Uh, ne- next round. Uh, if he or doesn't, might- <laughs> I'm just going to steal a horse from one of the people way back there. So, no problems. Austin Edwards doesn't give up. Yeah. Poor it's Juniper. Just, I just see his like, like comically, like his hands and feet are like facing the-, at the back. Yeah, like I, I imagine it was the same type of uppercut I went for, and I just like you see me like head first, like chin go flying back, and I just soar off the back. And I'm going to try to catch you on the, the at least the second skip. I'm going to try to get you on the second skip, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I think I think you skipped at least three times already. Just like <laughs> clank, clank, brank. <laughs> oh. Wyatt, it's your turn. All right. Seeing all this, I want to spur my horse forward. Constitution? Yep. <laughs> Saving throw for the horse. Uh, 19? Full speed ahead. I just had the plus one for the con, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, technically, yeah. your horse can benefit from your aura because <laughs> it's a saving throw. Oh, okay. Uh, 21. <laughs> no, yep. 22, something like that. Um, anyways, we spur forward. Oh, hold on. Let me change my. There we go. Do, 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 do. Coming up uh, beside. Well, let's see. Can I be on the same side as Juniper? Uh, you can't occupy the space that Juniper's in. All right, I guess we're moving over here. <laughs> Trampling um, past Austin. <laughs> yeah. um, but what I do is I use my bonus action to Misty Step Ooh. onto the front horses. So I actually leave 
and I and I say, Cinnamon, slow down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I end up kind of backwards straddling this horse. Okay. <laughs> okay. And for my two attacks, I want to take them against the pole holding the horses connected to the cart. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take my maul and I... <clears throat> Um, just trying to see on this. Okay, here we go. Using my great weapon, master, I get a twenty to hit it. <laughs> yeah, and um, get a Wyatt. You know what? Let me use divine smite on it as well. Why not? <laughs> We're trying to slow this thing down, so. All right. Okay. Let's see what happens. First level divine smite. So it's like two d eight, two d eight. Right. Something like that. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with my great weapon fighting, I can re-roll one of my ones that I rolled. Okay. So, um, <laughs> thirteen plus twenty one. 26, 33 damage to the cart thing. <laughs> okay. You bring your maul, you turn around on the horse, and just mallet style smash through the truss. Um, the well, the the main part of the yoke and burdle, um, this is used to secure all four horses, but the horses are still all tied with ropes and other um accoutrements to the overall cart. What this does, though, is that this knocks the beam loose, so the carriage is going to run over it now. <laughs> um, and, the, and the whole stability of the horses pulling it is really, really bad. So what we're going to see happen now um, is you're, you're on one of these horses. Um, backwards. And, and backwards as well. <laughs> So um, cool. And the horse that you're on is attached to the pole that you just knocked off, which just hit the ground. And so I'm going to have you make a dexterity saving throw for this horse. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Because it's saving throw, right? Uh, it because this horse is not your ally, it does not benefit from your aura. Oh, okay. But that so, okay, okay. So you got a choice, okay. <laughs> You can try to keep this horse and stay on top of it because um, also you're backwards on the horse. Okay. <laughs> so your control over it is completely actually, I'm going to have you roll me that with disadvantage because yeah, you're backwards on the horse. Oh, well, I rolled even better. So, um, okay, great. <laughs> so super. So you're backwards on the horse, but you managed to get control of this thing. Um, it's still tied to the other horses and it trips and stumbles and falls somewhat. Um, but you manage to stay in, in control of it. The other horses, though, are not necessarily that lucky. One of the, the, the horse beside it, it falls prone. And the stagecoach still has momentum. So the coach is going to run over this horse next turn. <laughs> it's going to be really bad. You guys are basically watching a slow motion disaster in progress. This is not going to be pretty. <laughs> uh this could would this like launch the stagecoach like into the air it's gonna be bad <laughs> maybe or we should good. back up i austin had the right idea <laughs> failed uh, i still have my second attack okay what do you want to do with your second attack um i want to um maul hit uh is this a a bird person in front of me who has the reins on this uh the the two men in front of me one is a dwarf and one is a halfling um oh. and yes you could go for for one of the two of them if you wanted to yeah i'm gonna go for the halfling okay. with my maul uh oh gosh hot dice um 19 to hit it's a hit oh where are they? Uh, 
I'm going to re-roll that too, which is worse. Um, 18 damage. Um, what happens to this poor halfling? Oh, it just gets like, I, I go like sideways with the mall and he gets hit off the cart and into, into oh. the- Yeah, and goes under the wheels. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's a raunchy crunch noise. And then I'm facing this dwarf and I'm like, howdy. <laughs> and and, and the, the dwarf says, what have you done? You're crazy. You'll kill us all. <laughs> For the lot, I would do anything. <laughs> Calmly and creepily. <laughs> um, okay, so the riders, uh, the riders, and the rider on the the they continue up. Um, they continue to gain forward, uh, so they will be here in two rounds now. Although maybe sooner because the carriage is going to stop rather abruptly. <laughs> Why okay. I put on the brakes? <laughs> okay. Um, Mac Davies, the man, the man with the crossbow, see, sees what's going on, um, and he leaps forward onto uh, onto cinnamon, <laughs> uh, and and as he does so, he's going to grab um, Crafty Lil. Um. And uh, haul himself. So he uh, himself, um, and cra- he pulls himself and Crafty Lil on top of Cinnamon. <laughs> um, and of course, Cinnamon is your horse. Um, so he tries to rear on her and get get control of her, but she bucks and like and snaps. And so there, he's not oh, able to attack Cinnamon. or do anything else with his turn. Uh, but he has leaped off onto your your horse. Uh, Give him hell, Simon. That, we go to the top of the round with Austin Edwards, who is tumbling <laughs> in the dust and prone. What are you going to do, Austin? Uh, is this an opportunity? For, like, is since we're since everybody else except me is now moving, is this an opportunity for me to try to jump up with Buddy and Nilly? Uh, yeah, you could. You could uh, try to jump up uh, on Take them. My hand. Yeah, I I stand up and I reach out my hand as Buddy's coming close, and I I try to use the momentum to swing myself on behind Buddy on his horse. Okay, give me an athletics check. Twenty three. You leap up onto the horse. It's surprisingly graceful and athletic. You just kind of grab the base of the of the burdle of the, of the horse and leap yourself up with a with a heroic leap onto the back of uh, of uh, old Nilly. I, I place my hand on Buddy's shoulder and I say, "Keep it steady, now, son." <laughs> and I kind of prop myself up a little bit on the horse and I pull out a javelin and I aim for the uh, the crossbow guy that I had hit. Cool. Well, that, that's that's your action to pull yourself on the horse because you're you're not riding well, then, it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm assuming that it's like you really got okay, to get Fair enough. Yeah. To yeah. In that case, I put my hand on Buddy's shoulder and I say, "Keep it steady, now, son." <laughs> and I I start to like conjure up. Uh, you see that as I'm spinning my flail on the back of the horse, the flail, a ghostly flail, separates, and that's going to be. I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Yeah. Cool. There's your Spiritual Weapon. And that Spiritual Weapon can move 20? Yeah, 20 feet. So. Cool. I You should be able to control it now. So if I cast it... Oh, no. Doesn't quite make it far enough. But there's a flail going after them. <laughs> Alrighty. And it's spinning, spinning towards the them. air. Yeah. Buddy Knox, it's your turn. Uh, come on, Nelly. We gotta save Cinnamon. <laughs> and uh, I, I gotta you don't push. Have to. I, <laughs> I, I, I gotta get up. Uh, get up right on top of these two. Um, I get a nineteen. All right. Yeah, you move forward. Um. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone wants cinnamon to survive except for me. I'm like, oh, where'd the horse go? Yeah, where did the um, Oh, the horse just went flying off into the corner. <laughs> and uh, 
I, I'm definitely getting to the side of the of the of the carriage because I I see what's about to happen, um, and I'm gonna take a a, a big old swing uh, against um, Buddy trying to climb on uh, Cinnamon here. Okay, with, with my weight rapier, I'm gonna just kind of stab it into him. Um, do I get? Is he counted as mounted? Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, first attack is a miss. Second attack, I get a uh, a fifteen. Uh, let me confirm. Oh, it's just a miss. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm t- I'm trying to swipe at him. Yeah, and he he pulls himself down into the saddle. And then uh, I'm gonna th- uh, uh, throw a, 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 an inspiration at uh, old Wyatt. Alrighty, Wyatt, you doing okay up there? Okay, the coach. There is a heaving crash as the whore, uh, as the coach rolls forward uh, onto the tripped over horse, and the the driver tries to steer the the group of the horses, but without the burdle keeping everything in place, it spins over the axle flings forward flies into the air kind of bounces off to the side and just with this crashing heaving sound of splintering wood and canvas flies forward um so what's what's going to happen here is um let's just see here <laughs> remember we're supposed to find out where, the, where they're going my hair is just like <laughs> In the wind, and I'm just sitting there majestically, okay. like flexing on the horse. Like, so, yeah, Wyatt, I'm gonna have you make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, 15. Okay, <laughs> some dice. That's some dice. There is a titanic crash. As the uh, as the whole wagon uh, rends itself apart um, and crashes, um, and as it does so, it drags down through uh, through the tied together horses, right? Because the horses are still all tied into the wagon, even though you split the axle. So as the wheel goes over the um, the the burdle and, and everything else, it pulls itself over, flips over to the side, crashes over the knocked over horse, and then spins around with a sickening spin as it pulls on its side and smashes into all four of the other horses. And Wyatt. Wyatt, you are <laughs> flung from the, the wreck, um, but in the process, you are going to take a grand total of... Uh, you succeeded your saving throw, though. Uh, so instead of taking 40 points of bludgeoning damage, you take 20 and you land prone uh, over here. Uh, the horses are all killed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she really hates why it really hates horses. <laughs> the bandit is killed. They are disposable. <laughs> no actual horses were hurt in the filming of this production. Yeah. <laughs> They're not actually disposable. I love horses. We love horses. <laughs> We do. We really do. <laughs> I did we not just mean. Hate carriages. I thought it was going to be one of those like I separate it. You know, like the trains. You divide, spited it. And there's the record. Really wanted to make sure. It broke. There's a. Oh, there's a broken. <laughs> <laughs> you tr- you you hit the emergency brake at full speed. I'm just glad it didn't explode. You know. <laughs> um, and from that tumbles out uh, an iron chest and you hear the shattering of glass uh, within um, you see one of the wheels run over the driver that was still in it he falls over and one of the wheels slams in the back of the head shattering his skull ev- everywhere um, and the uh, the devastation and the carnage wrought by the whole crash is awful to behold <laughs> Mighty fine job there, Wyatt. Why are you okay? I'm all right. I'm all. I'm all right. How's, how's my hair? Is it good? My beard. Yeah. All right. I, I still look good. I'm a good. I think you, just- you got him. <laughs> <laughs> 
We just need to get the ones on cinnamon so we can, you know, ask where they're going. Because <laughs> save cinnamon. <laughs> no, no, save the people on cinnamon. Cinnamon, do what you need to do. Okay. Um, with that, um, the the short haired woman, the the mage, she screams. She says, "You interlopers, jerks! I'll get you!" And uh, her and she she clenches her fist and sends it sailing towards Wyatt, uh, getting a sixteen to hit. Uh, oh, Wyatt, you're prone. Oh, so it doesn't help though. So the the uh, she gets a sixteen to hit with the hand. Yeah. Comes in, she tries to punch you with it, but uh, but it misses. Um, and then she also. Uh, that's her uh, her bonus action. She's going to shoot a firebolt at you, uh, getting a 15 to hit. Rolling uh, around. Yeah. Yeah, you're just dodging. Wyatt, it is your turn. Um, and I'm... Have we stopped? Uh, yes, like, we've stopped. stopped. We've stopped. Have they stopped? Yes, everybody's stopped now. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I'm going to get up <laughs> and um, how far can I go? Oh, I can go this far. Okay. Um, I go up to Cinnamon. Um, let me move. And I start to try to pull them off of Cinnamon. I guess using a grapple? Grapple? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, athletics. Yep. Oh my god, twelve. You can add your bardic inspiration. You gave it to me. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh. I thought you might need it in your horrendous crash, but apparently you didn't. Well, I am thirteen. That's enough. <laughs> Yeah. Broke the tie. <laughs> uh, who do you yeah. want to pull pull down? Um, the I'm gonna pull down the magic user. Okay, she lands on the ground, prone in front of you. That replaces one of your two attacks, so you could make a second attack against her if you wanted to. Um, maul her, maul her. I don't want to kill her. <laughs> we we got another one alive. Can I? Um, Here's the smart one. Yeah, but he's on the horse. He could get away. Uh, can I use an action, or uh, I guess an because he used the attack grapple, yep. but I can't tie her up. No, you'd need to spend a separate action to try to do that. Well, I'm just gonna maul her then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mace to the face. Uh, can eight. I tie her up? No. Guess I'll. Uh, you have it. advantage because she's prone. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, fifteen. Uh, that is uh, uh, a hit, but she is going to bring up a shimmering shield as a reaction to block it. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I'm just like, well, if I can't tie you up, I just start hitting a shield with a, the mall. I'm like, all right, I, I see one there. <laughs> and that, that's it. Okay. Because everybody has stopped, the riders arrive. Uh oh. Wow, wow. Following at their fair clip, that will be their movement because that's what they need. They need to get onto the board itself. So that is their <laughs> movement to arrive. There are uh, several of them. Uh, oh, I'm missing one of my riders. Where did they go? Okay, well, we'll just do this. There we go. As they arrive, each of them pulls out a short bow. And um, you hear the one at the front. He's got this big red beard and the, and chins upon chins uh, flapping out underneath. Um, and these kind of long pointed bugbear like ears. And he's got the mace and a shield over his head as he's riding the, the giant boar forward. And he says, shoot them, kill them, leave none of them alive. They'll get their day for what they've done to us. And so the 
um, the four riders loose their arrows uh, at uh, at the group of you. Um, now, Wyatt, you're on the ground behind the horses, so they're gonna. Uh, um, so the four of them uh, are gonna fire shots at Buddy and Austin. Uh, I get a twenty-one and a fourteen, and a seventeen and a sixteen against Austin. One of those hit. Okay, the and I get twenty-one hits, and I get a critical hit and a natural one against Buddy. Ow! And a twenty-one and an eight. So a crit and a hit. All right, the critical hit. Ow. Critical hit is going to be fifteen points of piercing damage, and another hit for another seven damage, and then Austin, you take an arrow shot for another six points of damage. I'm like, well, wait, just... And then I get an arrow. (laughs) All right. And so that are the riders and the gore man. And Mac Davies, um, he um, rolls off of the the horse um, himself, disengaging with his uh, bonus action. Uh, Is he disengaging from me? Uh, He is beside you, yeah. Because I have Sentinel. Okay, Sentinel goes off. So as he disengages, I grab my flannel. I go, where do you think you're going, son? And I crack him again in the head. And now he's on foot, right? As he's disengaging. Uh, He's he's leaping off on that. So we'll we'll say that it doesn't apply yet because he's getting off the horse. Yeah. All right. 13. Ah, That's a miss. Ah. Okay. Okay. He ducks out of the way. He ducks out of the way, and he fires a shot at Wyatt, uh, getting a big old nine to hit. <laughs> Takes another shot, getting an 11. Both whiff. I dodged the same way for both. To the top with Austin. Um, Austin leaps off the horse and lands next to... What's this guy's name? Uh, this guy is Mac Davies. So I land next to Mac, and I'm just going to clock him in the head. Actually, so as I leap off, me like both me and my spiritual weapon go on either side of him. Nice. Although we want to keep him alive, right? When you want I say him. as I'm crushing his skull. <laughs> oh, I crit. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divine smite. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Oh, it's no. important. So I, I, I kind of casually, as he's like leaping off of his horse, and I miss that first attack. I casually get off the horse, and let's let's say he's like limping because he's he's been injured a few <laughs> yeah. times. And I just walk up to him and I go, "I told you to stay put." And as I'm flailing my flail, it starts to glow again, and I just crack him in the top of the skull. And so that's going to be, hold on. We do, do, we do max plus dice, right? Yeah. Yeah. What level <laughs> smite are you using? Uh, just a first. Just. Uh, so that's going to be a total of 37 damage. So I imagine this, you bring the, the the flail, spin it around to where, and the ball of the head completely displaces his actual head. That's what it like, does. Like, it knocks the head into his torso. <laughs> yeah. And then he just kind of crumples there. And I turn to the riders coming at me. And I, uh, first of all, yeah. So I turn to the riders coming at me. And I'm like, don't worry, friends. Just make sure we have somebody alive to talk to. I've got this. And I pull out a javelin. And I'm going to, as my for my second attack, um, I'm going to toss it at the boar. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, 18. That's a hit. That's going to be nine damage. Nice. Okay, Buddy Knox, it's your turn. 
uh, I I I kind of turn around on my horse. I I turn around on Nilly. I kind of like get her to face the other way. Like I do a little trot, a little pivot. I say, "You're a little late to the party." And uh, I'm gonna cast hypnotic pattern. Oh uh, no! Right on the middle of all five of them, plus their mounts. Okay. So it's a uh, DC 15. Okay, so I'm gonna Wisdom. start with uh, I'm gonna start with the, the top scout, and I'm gonna go clockwise. Um, both him and both her and her mount fail. Uh, both uh, this one and the this one both they succeed. These two both succeed. Ooh. Um, this guy succeeds, but his mount fails. <laughs> Uh, and our big guy, he succeeds, but his mount fails. Um, anything else? Uh, no, that's uh, that's it for old Buddy Knox. Okay. The coach is destroyed. <laughs> got it. Why I got it. Uh, Crafty Lil. Um, Crafty Lil uh, pulls her Big B's hand forward, uh, and it goes to smash into Wyatt, uh, getting a 20 to hit. Yep. Nice. That is going to be a total of uh, 15 force damage as the hand sails past and punches you in the side. Uh, and then um, she is going to use uh, her action um, and she is going to cast she's going to step over here and she's going to say you're not getting any further and she's going to cast fireball ah where? On herself? Uh, no, she doesn't need to quite cast it on herself. Because... Let's pull out a fireball here. It always looks so small when it starts and then it expands. <laughs> yes. I'm always like, that's hmm? so tiny. Oh! Uh, that looks like all y'all. <laughs> oh. At least Dexter all of okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity saving throws. Uh, and, uh... Uh, Nilly, uh, you'll uh, you'll be able to make yours with it. With um, uh, you're on your horse, uh, Buddy Knox. So, and uh, Buddy, you get a plus three to your save. <gasps> it's gonna be eighteen six, for me. Six, six. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, this one's uh this one's a scorcher. Do we have any healing potions? Uh nope. You got lots of healing though. There's three paladins and a bard. Um this one is this is gonna be a 35 damage fireball. And what's the DC? Uh it is DC 14. I'm dead. <laughs> no! <laughs> Why? Can anybody heal me? Well, I'm not looking too hot either. I should already update. Oh. I mean, I made my save, and so did Nilly, but uh, that's still... It, it hurt. Nilly takes zero damage, though, if she if uh, she made her save because of your mounted combatant. Uh, and what about... Uh, what about oh, yeah, uh, Cinnamon horse. here? Cinnamon! <laughs> uh, oh, and... Uh... uh Fifteen. I Cinnamon is... makes the saving throw and takes half Whatever of thirty-five. Cinnamon. <laughs> Whatever and Cinnamon. So um, that is going to be uh, that's going to be seventeen damage. So Cinnamon has two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Cinnamon. Cinnamon's mane is on fire. <laughs> like... All right, Wyatt. It's a death saving throw for you. Oh, God. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay, that's one I success. I don't add anything to it, right? No, no. no. Oh, no, not no. Failure. Success! <laughs> Alrighty. 
the riders. Okay, so to the uh, this guy shakes his mount uh, out of it, uh, so he's gonna wake his mount up. Um, and the other, these other two, they'll are going to ride forward, um, and they're gonna start pelting shots uh, into Austin, getting uh, two seventeens and a seven and a fourteen. They all, I raise my shield and they all bounce off. You catch all the Ooh. shots with with your uh, with those. This last guy back here, he's totally incapacitated. Uh, the Gore Man, um, he unfortunately his mount is totally out of it, so he is going to jump off his uh, his mount, and he is going to come dashing towards you, Austin. But that's going to be his entire turn. All right, come on, big guy. Let's tussle. Okay. Um, and Mac Davies is very dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We go to the top with Austin. Um, I would love to fight right now, but I think I'm going to use my own lay on hands. So as, as, as I kind of douse the flames on myself... I um I'm gonna use lay on, lay on hands to give myself I'm gonna give myself twenty healing. Nice. Anything else, Austin? Uh, as a bonus action, so he's barreling towards me, and I'm trying to heal myself. And I look up at him, and I go, "Hey, Tubby, watch out behind you!" And my spiritual weapon goes and clocks him in the back of the head. Alrighty. Uh, spiritual weapon. Oh, it uses my spell modifier, right? Yep. Well, that's not as good. But here it goes. I got a 16. He blocks it with his own shield. Well, I guess you saw that coming. And uh, that's it. That's my turn. Buddy Knox, over to you. Um, I can see the air is desperate. Uh, do we have a fighting chance? Who knows? Um, I'm going to uh, ride straight at um, the female caster. Okay. And 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 attempt to stab her with my uh, with my rapier. Cool. So I'm going to ride at her, and I get a. Uh, you have an advantage. 18 to hit yep that's it that is a hit Woo! um for uh eight damage okay and i'm gonna try to hit her again uh she fails her concentration check for her hand yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> um uh does a a 14 hit uh yes that uh the 14 will go through She's so squishy. Uh, for another eight damage. Nice. And then uh, I'm gonna cast a uh, healing word on uh, old Wyatt. <laughs> nice. Wyatt. Wow, we need you. What do I heal? Do I heal? Um. I can do it as a second level, so ten ten hit points. Ba -ba -ba. Sit up and I'm like, <gasps> <gasps> nice. I saw the cinnamons. <laughs> uh, Crafty Lil does not like where she's at right now. Uh, not one one bit. So she is going to cast Misty Step uh, hey. and appear over here. Uh, and then she is going to Firebolt uh, at Buddy Knox. No. Uh getting a 20 to hit. Oh, that hits. Oh, please don't do a lot of damage. Uh, uh, I four, turn around. Uh, and that's gonna be 10 points of fire damage. And it blasts me off my uh, off <laughs> off Nilly. <laughs> Are you in zero? Yeah, I turn around. <laughs> as I turn around, I don't see Where'd she go? And it and it and it, it hits me in the back. And I and I slump forward on Nilly, and then she's gonna clamber up onto uh, 
the horse with the other uh, the the other uh, bandit. Wyatt, it's your turn. <laughs> you you get up and you see uh, Bl- Buddy Knox just get blasted off his horse and land on the ground. You know what? I heal Buddy with my lay on hands. <laughs> so a lot of healing. Ten, of ten. I'll give you ten. Uh, you give me ten. Okay. Anything um, else? And then the I'm love. gonna um <laughs> uh that's the action right mm-hmm. let's see do it austin on the hypnotic Wyatt. pattern's over now too isn't it yeah it's it's done oh you know what? oh no <laughs> um i'm just gonna get back on the crispy cinnamon <laughs> crispy cinnamon <laughs> burnt cinnamon it's delicious uh, cinnamon my beard is like half falling off because I died. <laughs> <laughs> you got punched too many times with a giant magic hand. Um, yep. Uh, yep. That's it. All right, the riders. Uh oh. No. Oh no. <laughs> All right, uh, Austin. I'm gonna shoot you four times. Yep. Uh, I get a twenty and a seven. <laughs> And an 11 and a critical hit. I guess the crit hits. Nothing else. Uh, the crit's only going to be 12 damage. Acceptable. Uh, I fire two shots at Wyatt, getting a 14 and a 10. Um, and oh, I wobble because I'm still a bit low on health. <laughs> Just, this is low. Alrighty. And I'm going to fire two more at you, Wyatt. Uh, All right. Getting a 19. And yep. a 20. Yep. <laughs> Why? No! Uh, for seven damage and eight damage. Nope. <laughs> I fall off my horse. <laughs> Cinnamon! <laughs> I'm just getting confident again. <sighs> Dead again. Should have yield myself. All right, uh, and the gore man brings his mace down on uh, Austin, getting a 19 and a 6 to hit. I bash them away with my shield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Austin, it's your turn. All right. Um, I, I'm... I'm just gonna keep going for it. So I'm swinging my my mace or my uh, my flail around. I'm gonna bring it down on this beast. Yeah, I got a twelve. It's a miss, I'm afraid. I'm going to attempt my second attack. That's a little better. Twenty-two to hit. That is a hit. Woo! All right. I get I do seven damage. <laughs> All right. And then uh, my bonus action, my spiritual weapon is going to attack him as well. Okay. I get a one. Okay. That's not good. <laughs> Austin Austin puts his hands up after the failed attempts to hit him. You're going to put your hands up? I, I think we've been outdone. I'm I'm afraid. I'm on the ground. Life. Dead. Buddy Knox, what are you going to say to that? I run over to Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm holding Wyatt on the ground. <laughs> Don't come back from the cinnamons, Wyatt. Come back. And and, and I look up is is it like a is it like a can you describe the the gore man? He's a big fat bugbear. We don't we don't want no trouble, Mister Gore Man. We we were just cattle rustlers getting you know with a with eyes too big for our stomachs. Hmm. 
he he laughs and he says, "Right. Well, you all just broke our cart, killed our horses. So I reckon you can pull it." Oh, yes, sir. Why get up? <laughs> Whatever you I'm say, not- sir. Just let me help my friend, and we'll pull the cart. And I, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. And uh, he, he says, um, uh, the turns. Lil, you think them? They might be interested in buying these three. And he licks his lips. And Lil says, Yeah, well, she says, Astrid's a strange one. She might be able to do something interesting with them. Yeah, she might have a use for them. But for now, yeah, they can pull the wagon. And that is where we're going to take our break. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Still dead. <laughs> it's, it's okay Wyatt it's okay. we're gonna come back in about 15 minutes and see if our Palins of the Silver Order can get out of this one alive <laughs> see you in a few and we are back from our break <laughs> who goes don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts including ones for like Troll Killer from Dungeons of Dragonheim but also some new ones from Shadows. Check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community which is exclusive for our patrons, where you can come and talk to us about all things Drakenheim and all the nerdy topics that you want to talk to us about, including how poorly this session of d d is going for us. <laughs> so if you'd like to chat with us about our thoughts and feelings and heartbreaks and sorrows, join our Patreon and find us on Discord. Thank you. And of course, uh, a huge thank you, and as, as well, this episode of D- of the Untold Tales of Drakenheim has been sponsored by the Easy to Roller Dice Company and their new Color Spray Dice Kickstarter, which uh, is offering some super colorful and very affordable dice. It is the perfect place. Easy Roller Dice is awesome for building up a big collection of dice. Remember when I first discovered them, they had a pound of dice that you could get super cheap, and they've got lots of really awesome high-quality dice at a great price. So check them out at easyrollerdice.com. With that, let us return. So, on the road, your weapons raised. um, They allow you to first stabilize Wyatt as the bandits dismount from their horses and their bows still drawn and trained on you demand that you kick over your weapons. Start Are you throwing handing them my... your guitar? No, the guitar is just on my Keep back. Your guitar. That was my my shield and my my sword, my daggers. Pulling out all these like. <laughs> I I the pull go- out. Oh yeah, go ahead. The as you pull out your weapons, the gore man gestures over to one of the 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 riders. Take them, store them in the back. All right. Now, what was that all about, you three? Where you come from, and who sent you? Look, I, I, I told you, Gorman. We're just some cattle rustlers looking for an easy target. We we thought we could get out, get our way with a with a stagecoach heist. You know, things have been tough out here in Drakenheim. Pretty fancy looking cattle rustlers, says Crafty Lil. Those are all symbols of the sacred fire that you're wearing. You yeah, Illyrians. Yeah, yeah. You heard of them paladins, right? We knocked over a few of them on our way out here, stole their gear. 
All right, make a deception check. Oh, deception. I got a 12. <laughs> Is it the accent? You can't hide that Illyrian accent. You're not from around here at all. <laughs> I may be Illyrian. I may have been a paladin of the order, but I ain't no more. They changed. They don't stand for the light no more, and we're just trying to make our way in this world of monsters and thieves, and I guess we've given up our oaths to the true light. Um, Crafty Lil says, well, first make a deception check. <laughs> Seven. Is that so? And so you were paladins? So you would say that you spit on your oath? That you defile the flame right here, right now? That you think that all, that, that all the things that the hierarch stands for are a bunch of baloney and junk? Yeah? My eyes twitching as this is happening. <laughs> Didn't think so. You're in for a real rough time. We uh, quite a few of a uh, few of us have been knocked over by a bunch of you guys in the past little while. I think the rest of us are going to have a lot of fun with you bunch. That serves you right. Nevertheless, the armor looks pretty nice. Take it off. Excuse me. It takes a lot of time and effort. <laughs> Sure. I start slowly doing it <laughs> as I'm flexing my muscles. You three, keep your arrows trained on them. I'm going to get the cart ready to move, move again. See what we can do. Says if you want to know, if you want to know the real truth, there's 10,000 Illyrians about to bring hell upon this, this desolate city. We're here for one thing and one thing only, and that's the cleansing. And so if you want to get out of here right now, we'll let you. But there's a whole bunch of bunch of wrath coming this way. And it doesn't take a man of the light to know what it looks like when you're going to get burned. The gore man punches you in the face. <laughs> Shut oh! up! <laughs> oh, my moneymaker! <laughs> Um, it's, and they, uh, they look at you and they look at their, their good horses and they look at your horses and say, well, all right, then let's see if we can't get this cart back up and running again. And they tie, they proceed to, to take the rope that they can find from the back of the cart and they tie the three of you up back to back and gag you all. Oh. They tie you to a tree just off the side of the road. And they manage to get your horses under control. And over the course of the next eight hours, they uh, pull the cart off to the side of the road. And they manage to do some makeshift repairs, lash your horses to it and shift, shuffle around the horses that they have and the horses that you have um, and get the cart back up into some manner of... It, it's rickety. The axle's going to bust in a little while, but they managed to get the cart back up into a workable state. Did you say eight hours is a rest? <laughs> you guys get, can take the benefits of a short rest, but not a long rest because you're, you're tired. You're tied up. Um, and they, <laughs> a, and as they do so, they, once the card is back up and, and in order again, they shuffle things around. They, um, they, and at one point crafty Lil says, you're lucky we're letting you live. It's a lot better than what you gave to Mac, to Mac and our, and some of the others. You know, you killed three of us. There's three of you. And uh, she um, 
slaps one of you in the face. Uh, mm. We're going to say she slaps Buddy Knox in the face again. Ah. Ah. Um, and she kind of oh. comes by around one, one more time and says to, to Wyatt, you got a pretty face too. Maybe it would look uh, better if I were to, you know, stab your eyes out and cut off your ears. But she decides not to. It probably would not look better, actually. <laughs> and then they uh, tie you off from the the tree, load you in the back of the cart, and continue on their way. The three of you are in the back of the cart together. And they continue to drive. And now, um, driving the cart now is the gore man and one of the other riders from before, uh, along with Crafty Lil, who are sitting up in the front of the wagon. Um, and the rest of the riders... Uh, sorry, it, it's just Crafty, Crafty Lil and uh, the Gore Man are in the front of the wagon driving it, and the other four riders are proceeding along together. Uh, and the, the big boar is trailing along behind as they continue slowly up the road. Do any of you want to try anything? <laughs> I'm going to try. So we're all tied back to back. Yeah. Right. You're all and tied, gagged. tied together. Your, your wrists and ankles are bound uh, and you're gagged. Uh, I'm going to try to break out of the tie with my hands, but not like I want to do it so that I break out, but I don't make like a big scene about it. Okay. Just breaking them with your raw strength. That's what I'm going to try. Okay. Give me an athletics check. Got a 19. You rustle around and you snap the bonds around your wrist. Can they, are like, do Roll they have a D6. Eyes? Six. There's a snap, but as they do, the, 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 as your binds snap, the wagon shudders and rustles over a bunch of rocks, and the noise of the rocks masks the ro- the snapping of your ropes. And I cough a little bit as I... <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, shut up it? back there! I thought we gagged you for a reason. <laughs> with my hands still tied behind my... or n- With my hands still behind my back, I start to try to untie the rest of the their bond. Their, yeah. Okay. As you do so, you can hear Crafty Lil saying... Saying to the Goreman, it's a big setback, but we should still make it to camp by shortly after midnight. It's been a long day. The Goreman says, yeah. They'll be pissed that we didn't bring bring all the delirium up to them any sooner than this, though. They get really, really mad when they get left waiting, but hopefully if we give them a couple of these, uh, these paladins is a bit of a proof of what happened, you know. We bring them back, that way, bring them back alive. That way, you know, their, vo- their words alone, I mean, they're idiots and terrible liars, so at least when they, they throw a fit, at the boss and everyone else, they'll know that we did get attacked and waylaid by him. You know how he gets if we uh, get back there with uh, with uh, any excuses. She's like, yeah. The snail, I don't like getting on his bad side. He's usually pretty calm, but when he gets mad, he gets mad. Uh, these are the two on the front of the cart, right? Yeah. And then are there are there people with their eyes on us? Um... Here and there, the other riders, the archers, will circle around. So there, there's the four that are riding on horseback, and now Crafty Lil, mm-hmm. the mage, and um, Gore and the Gore Man, uh, the the bugbear with the big red beard, they're riding on the wagon. Cool. Oh, man, I wish I could communicate with you guys. Um... Can I try to uh, slip out of my bonds? I'm also helping, like, I'm working to untie them as well, so hopefully that makes it easier. Okay. Another one of you can attempt to... You One of you wants to slip free? Or I want to, like, slip my hands out instead of trying to break out. 
make an acrobatics check. Choo -doo. Uh, 14. 14. You managed to slip your wrist free. And I'm also going to keep them back there. Okay. And then try to help uh, old Wyatt. I old. <laughs> and Wyatt, what are you going to do? I'm also going to try to break my bonds. Athletics? Yep. Ooh. Uh, 25. Okay, roll a d6. One. Okay. <laughs> As your <sighs> bonds snap, Crafty Lil turns around. What was that? She turns around. <clears throat> <and> <clears throat> <laughs> All of you can make a deception check. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Six. Okay. She comes up. She looks at the group of you, looks down to a sack where your weapons are stored. She looks at the three of you, picks up the sack puts it on her lap, and turns back around. Um, are are, are um, gags still in? Yeah. Are they kind of like, you can kind of like spit them out after a while, or are they pretty? No, you need to reach behind your head and undo okay. them. Okay, okay. The cart continues to rumble forward. <laughs> oh, oh. We're all just sitting here with our hands free, try, like glancing at each other, trying to trying to figure something out. Um, I'm uh I'm gonna uh I I'm gonna forward, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna uh start yelling at Austin my gag if it wasn't for you and your stupid plan we would have been uh halfway from here oh, hey, shut up back there no, you're the, one, the, one, the, one, the one that and i just i kick off the side and i'm putting my back into we, uh, uh, yeah we start it wrestling for you and your stupid horse i hate juniper okay the 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 gore man stands up um gives the reins to um, to Crafty Lil, stands up in the cart, picks up his mace, and he prods it at the si at the side of uh, Austin's face. I said, "Shut up." Um, I grab the mace <laughs> and try to pull it from his arm. Okay, um, make a strength check, athletics check. Twenty-three. You rip the mace out of his hands. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got a three. Remember, I, I don't have armor on either. Yeah, I don't have armor on yeah. either. But buddy, Knox, what um, you got? Uh, Eleven. Okay. Would you say that we surprised them? <laughs> um, no, I would not huh. say that you that you surprised them. Uh, Fine. You ripped the surprised. mace out of his hand. Yeah, he didn't see it coming. Surprise! You surprised <laughs> yeah. the ride. I, I will say that you surprised the riders, Ooh, okay. cool. but not uh, um, not the gore man. Um, and I'll give uh, Crafty a little check. Uh, no, she's not surprised. Okay. Okay. So you're in the back of the cart. 
Austin, you're the first one to act. Um, I am going to attempt to shove the bugbear off the cart. Okay. So I rip the mace out of his hand, and with my other hand, I give him a big old push. Just through the canvas, pushing him right out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, give <laughs> me an opposed strength check. 22. I get a 14. Ah! I throw him off the cart. Okay, I'm going to give him a dexterity saving throw. Unfortunately, I get a 9. <laughs> So you push him off the side of the cart. It's not moving at full speed because it's broken, but you push him off and he lands prone uh, on the side of the cart and uh, he takes 12 points of damage. And the then fall. I, with without even skipping a beat, I shove him off the cart, grab his mace with, uh, let me add a mace here. Is it just like a standard? Yeah. Standard mace? Yeah. Mace, add, <laughs> equipped. And I am going to club uh, the spellcaster in the face with the mace. Okay, mace to the face. Oh, that, works. that works. Get it. I get a eighteen. Uh, that is a, a a hit, but with in a moment of panic, um, she's going to cast shield to block it. Ah. Okay. I, can I toss the mace to? Uh, no, I'm just going to hold on to it. Okay. Never mind. Um, she, uh, she shrieks, um, and it, she, cause she's got the reins, mm -hmm. um, and so she is going to, um, and she's used a bunch of her spells. Okay. Um, and she, uh, is going to, um, She's going to cast, you, you see her for a moment, a look of shock on her face, and she vanishes. Damn it. With our stuff? Are the reins still floating in place? The reins drop to the, drop to the ground, um, and she vanishes, um, and the, the bag of your stuff, though, is still on the, the front seats, um, and then you hear this thud on the ground be beside uh the the horses are not moving forward fast they're just pulling the wagon at a, at a trot um so but you hear a thud on the ground buddy knocks um seeing this i i i can i remove the gag yep i'm gonna remove the gag i'm gonna run to the front seat mm-hmm uh, I throw the bag back into the the carriage, and I just want to give like a yeah, <laughs> and 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 just drive the cart as fast as I can forward. Okay, um, the horses, uh, which three of the horses are your horses. <laughs> there are there are boys. Cinnamon they they live, and, and, and the cart begins uh, roiling forward um, at uh, at a full speed. I also have land proficiency, vehicle land proficiency. Oh, Will this good. count as yes. stagecoach driving? <laughs> uh, the gore man gets up from, from the ground um, and he, start, he starts yelling, Argh! and he's going to make a quick run as fast as he can for the back of the cart. Um, he tries to leap up onto the back of it, but he can't and he falls to the ground behind it as it runs away. <laughs> Uh. Wyatt, it's your turn. Oh gosh. Um can I take a, an action to put on my armor? <laughs> so we don't have anybody else in the cart with us, sorry. Uh putting on your armor would take a whole minute. A minute, never mind then. Um All right, I just take one of my javelins and out the back I aim it at the gore man. <laughs> uh, 18 to hit. It's a hit. Five damage. Nice. And take another <laughs> javelin. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Oh, that doesn't hit. Nope. Nope. Nine. <laughs> 
the riders are surprised. So we go back up I, to Austin. Anything else that you want to do? Just kind of duck to the side as much as I can because I know I'm I have no cover if they try to shoot me. Cool. Awesome. Austin, it is your turn. Um so all the riders are behind us yes. and the Gorman's behind us, and we don't know where the spellcaster is. Or do we see her as we take off? Do we see her behind us as we well? We don't see her, no. Um Okay, well, first of all, I remove the gag. Okay. And I oh, yeah. am going I'm going to uh, pop up to the front of the cart with um, with Buddy. And if I peer over the top of the cart, like any any sign of her? Uh, no sign of her at all, but you can see the other riders are spurring on their mounts to chase you down. I, um, oh man, let's see. I'm I'm gonna grab one of my javelins, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Buddy, and I'm and I, I'm gonna quickly ask. We need to keep one of them to know where we're going, right? I uh, I reckon we can ride straight. It we overheard them talking. We should be there soon. It can't be too far ahead. Maybe we but just. They're gonna know like it's not a, us, though. Uh, um, we we bring the hammer, the cold iron of that hammer down. I'm gonna down tell upon you. Us. I'm gonna tell you what my idea is, and you can tell me what I can get away with. So okay. I want to tie a rope around my javelin and throw it at the Gorman, uh, Gorman, to drag him behind the cart. Okay, um, it'll be an action because you've just pulled off your mask. Yeah. To to do that will be an action to set up the rope. I will do that. I will. I will okay. start tying a rope around the javelin. Um, and actually, could I tie a rope around the javelin and toss the javelin to Wyatt? Sure. Okay. Sure. Alrighty. Um. So, streaking out, uh, from out of nowhere around the sides, comes a bolt of fire. Uh, towards ah. cinnamon. No, uh, cinnamon. and it gets a ten to hit cinnamon. Oh, uh, and misses. Uh. <laughs> oh, Woo. where did it yep. come from? Came from about a hundred feet behind the carriage. Buddy Knox, it's your turn. Um, we're gonna step up the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and keep the chase going. Okay. The oh, I'm going to give an inspiration to uh, Wyatt. The Goreman whistles and his big old piggy, uh, which was following along with the cart, comes along and he rides up onto it. And he starts spurring on the pig, charging after you, screaming at the top of his lungs, I should have killed you all! He cries out. Um... Wyatt, it's your turn. Get him, Wyatt. Yeah, you shoulda. <laughs> um, okay. Can I use the the inspiration on my attack, attack roll? Yep, but you don't need to decide till after you've rolled the dice. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, well, I crit, so, you know. If that's what the tide, the tide <laughs> the, the, the tide casual. javelin. Okay. <laughs> The javelin sails towards the gore man. So I, I want to stick him and then Kay. for the second part, can I pull him off his bore? Yeah, roll the damage and then I'll let you make a, 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 a grapple at range. And because Ooh. you crit, I'm going to give you advantage. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> five damage with the javelin. With the crit? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Uh, Fourteen. Okay, that leaves him bloodied. And then uh, a grapple with advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my inspiration. Six. <laughs> Did you roll double ones? Double threes. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Wait. That's wait. I add my athletics. Yeah. 
12. It's not enough to pull him off the, the mount. The javelin jams into his side and it yanks him forward, but it's not enough. And, it, and it's stuck into him and he gr- grasps out at the rope. The riders. The riders um, bolt forward on their horses, pull out their ar- arrows and and say um, and start shooting at your horses. Two shots are fired at each horse. No! Uh, I get a, um, a 22 versus Nelly. A 15 and a 7 against uh, Cinnamon. And Juniper, yes. I get a 17 and an 8. Cinnamon lives! Uh, Juniper takes 5 points of damage. And um, and Nelly takes 5 points of damage. And the other horse that was uh, one of the the rider's horses, uh, they shoot it as well, uh, and it takes uh, it takes five points of damage as well. Um, so they they start bolting at the the horses to to take them ah! out. Austin, it's your turn. All right. Um, so there's a javelin stuck in the gore man, and Wyatt's holding the other end. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab that rope and just yank it. Okay. <laughs> Go Are for we it. doing a pose, pose strength yep. checks? Yep. 25. You yank him off the, the, um, off the pig. Uh, cool. and he falls to the ground and you're dragging him behind the cart now. Roll D6 damage for how much he's being dragged behind a roll a moving cart so he's gonna yeah. take 2d6 points of damage every round that he's dr- being dragged behind like this so that's eight damage <laughs> okay uh, he uh, might not live long yeah enough. you know whatever it's don't fun. worry about it we gotta deal with these riders okay if we can't we gotta make it there alive a bolt of flame strikes out towards the rope itself Oh, but it misses. It sails. You can see this, this <laughs> it was trying to shoot the rope right, right out. Buddy knocks. Um, I'm going to. Cause I don't have anything on me. I don't have any. Uh... You have your guitar. No, you can grab <laughs> like. I guess you could reach behind like the your stuff is on the seat next to you. Um I uh I turn to the right and uh against one of the riders and I go um you're not going to get a uh uh, uh I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and uh, I cast dissonant whispers. Uh, I get a five on my saving throw. So he's going to take 3d6 uh, psychic damage. Okay. Uh, ooh, 18. Or sorry, 16. Uh, the dissident whispers kill him. <laughs> you yes. broke his heart. <laughs> <laughs> he just falls off the horse and gets trampled by it. <laughs> he just, duh, 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 duh. And oh, jeez. Oh. So much trampling today. <laughs> keep riding we can we just gotta make it to this we gotta lose these riders and uh, I'm gonna throw an uh, inspiration towards uh, old um, uh, Wyatt again I'm not old I'm okay. young so the gore man is gonna try to break out he's gonna try to pull himself free of the ropes and everything so I'm gonna have him make an opposed another opposed strength check just as if he was trying to break out of a grapple against me yep yeah. I get an 18. I get an 18 as well. Uh, uh, I think we uh, roll again. Roll we are off. Tug roll. of war. Tug of war. I get another 18. I get a 10. Hey. Yes. <laughs> nah, you're not. You ain't getting away from me, He's Sonny. Just, like, so he tries to try, behind yeah, the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he takes another 2d6 points of damage. Another eight points. Uh, he is not looking too healthy for the record uh, like the <laughs> gravel is like ripping through his face his nose is partially torn off Wyatt it's your turn and I haven't been able to see where the, f- the fire is coming from right You, it's been coming out of nowhere 
Hmm. All right. I um, take another javelin and I throw it at the closest rider. Cool. Uh, yeah, I imagine after you knock the Gorman off, like the canvas of the wagon just like is torn and shorn apart. Yeah. Tw- 24 to hit. To hit. There's a big hole in the side of the okay. canvas. Um nine damage the rider is bloodied by the javelin shot as it hits him in the side ah he cries out another javelin uh 14 to hit a hit <laughs> oh another nine damage he tumbles Connect. he tumbles from the saddle pair of javelins uh one in his chest one in the neck oh the, right. the riders now are going to start shooting back at the group of you. They're going to fire one shot at each of you, uh, getting a 14, a 19, and an 11 against Buddy. 11 against me? Yeah. Um, miss. Uh, and a 14 and a 19 against uh, Austin and uh, uh, Wyatt. Without my armor on, yes. Five yes. damage each. I can handle that. Uh, and they're going to fire one more shot at Austin, getting a, a 13 to hit yep. for another five damage. Fair enough. It is your turn, Austin. Uh, is the rope tied off on anything, or am I just stuck it's, holding it? You're holding it. You didn't tie it off on anything, so... Is it going to be an, an action to tie it to the back of the cart? Yeah, or to reel, like, if you want to reel it in or tie it off, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm going to, I'll tie it off. Okay, so you're going to keep dragging him behind? Yeah, sure. Okay. And then I'm we need pick one up, of them? We, um, don't need, we don't need no one. You know, this is too entertaining. I, 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 I'm enjoying watching him drag him behind this cart. So I tie it off. Can I, as a free action, pick up my shield? Yep. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can pick up your shield and tie it off. That's fine. Cool. Yep. Uh, Crafty Jill. All right, no, uh, that's uh, Crafty Lil. Uh, not Crafty Jill. Wow. Wow. Good job. My brain. Uh, Crafty Jill. Crafty Lil. Wow. That was a poor New choice. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. why I'm wearing this mustache. Uh, cra- I'm not uh, chill. Crafty Lil is far too behind now because uh, she was left on foot when she jumped off invisibly. Uh, so uh, where she's gone. Who knows? Uh, Buddy Knox. Um, we're going to keep the... Uh, keep riding. Uh, I'm going to turn again to the to the other side of me. And uh, I look at one of the riders and, and, and I go... Uh, um, uh, you're hit... Your mama was a bullfrog, and I'm gonna cast uh, vicious mockery on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get a 17 on the wisdom saving throw. Ah, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, she was. That's why I ran away from home when I was 12. Oh man, you gotta tell me. We should. I need to listen to your story. <laughs> and then I keep writing. Okay, the gore man's gonna try to break out. Uh, I'm going to have you roll it for me, Kelly, but you tied it off. So roll it. Okay. Yep. Still using my strength? Yep. I got a 16. Um, He gets a 16 as well. And I'm going to say with the tie off, that's enough for him to, to he pulls it out of him and, uh, and shuffles up to his feet and he's look like he's staggering he's blood covered in blood like just the gravel and the mud just slick through him as he'd been dragged be- behind this cart as he straggles to his feet and is just woozily standing there Wyatt how many more riders are there two more um okay um, I'm going to continue to fire javelins at riders. Um, I'm going to start taking some of. Well, I have one left myself, but I guess they're in a pile beside us. 
all the javelins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, 19 to hit. Cool. Uh, six damage. Mm-hmm. You can add the the inspiration to to the damage if you want. How many times do I get it? Because I used yeah, it already. Oh, did you already use the second one? I gave you another one. I, maybe I didn't. Okay, hold on. I know I used one. Yeah, I gave you another one. Um, old Wyatt, remember? Oh, yeah. Did you use the old Wyatt one? <laughs> so I, I didn't use the second old Wyatt one. Uh, 16 to hit. A hit. Uh, Ten damage. The third rider is slain and tumbles from his saddle. Anything else? Um, I again, kind of. If there's anywhere to duck behind, I know not duck fully, but yeah. like just to yep. put a little bit of space between me and bullets coming my way. The final rider breaks from the pursuit and rushes off into the fields and forests beyond. Uh -oh. Austin, what are you gonna do? Uh, so the only person left is Gorman, or the Gorman who is falling behind slowly as we ride away, right? Yep. Um, I'm gonna pick up my flail and gear, and I'm gonna wave politely out the back <laughs> of the cart at the Gorman, and then I'm gonna hop into the seat with Buddy and just help him. Help him with the reins. Okay. Buddy, what are you going to do? Um, as they start to um, kind of disappear from our vision, uh, I'm going to slow down the horses. And uh, we got to get ready for... We, if, if we can get the surprise on these on these folk maybe we can maybe we can figure out where this delirium was going is it is the chest is the chest in the cart too we can keep the delivery on time they won't they may not be expecting us but i think they want their their rocks and so uh maybe i'm gonna find like a, a little side thing that I can pull the horses into. Okay. Off into the forest. All right. With that, you've seized the control of the cart. It is badly damaged. Um, the horses are wounded, but they're your horses and one of theirs driving it. And you continue to travel forward. The once you lose them, you pull it over to the side of the road to an old abandoned farmstead. Night is beginning to fall and set in. It's been, you know, you set out early in the day, so uh, even even earlier, it was already quite late. It's probably getting close to maybe 10, maybe almost midnight as well by the time you pull over. You can see in the distance, about maybe a mile or two or three away, off the road, though, there's the flickering lights on a ridge surrounded by a copse of, of, of uh, fir trees, several large campfires. Do we think we, that's where they were headed? And we don't have much time. Likely. If that ogre man, if the gore man gets back on his mount and the other rider let them know, that the package has been heisted, we could be in trouble. Now the question uh, is, fellas, do we uh, do we do our duty and get rid of them evil rocks now, or do we use them as leverage potentially? The way I see it, there's two potential options: we destroy the rocks, and we try to go into their camp and surprise them. Option two, we ride the cart right in, say we got their rocks, and we want to talk. But be ready for a fight either way. The night captain, 
he said that these rocks cannot leave the city. I, I think why it might be right. And I, I want to try to open up the... Uh, I'm going to take a look at the chest and give it a couple kicks and try to get it open. It's badly battered, but it is made of solid iron, uh, and it has a lock in, in it. Um, with a couple bashes, you are able to break awesome. the lock off. Um, and opening it up, it is lined with lead on the inside. And inside are uh, are several large shards in total there are 11 large shards of delirium hmm. what if we destroy the delirium but still close the the chest back up and use it and pretend that we have leverage do you have I a like spare your, lock i like your thinking austin i mean we did break been, the other one there's been a lot of trouble who's to say the lock didn't break by accident Hmm. Might be harder to convince them if they see the lock broken. You don't have anything to fix it, do we? Not that I know of. Well, I say we do our duty first and foremost and get rid of these demon stones. I agree. Where's the hammer? I, I have it. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start hammering the rocks with the okay. cold iron hammer. Um, you'll need to empower the hammer with at least one spell slot. Ugh. All right. Do you have I, any? Do you have? I, I have three spell slots left. Okay. Am I able to do it? Uh, it must be done by a, a, some sort of divine spite, smite power. All right, I blow a first level spell slot and empower the hammer. All right. Destroy the rocks. Finding a, a, a pillar of stone to place them on with a gloved hand, you place each stone on the rock, lift the hammer over your head, and with a prayer and channeling divine power into the hammer, you smash each of the stones of delirium in turn. There is a blaze and a flash um, and this brief bang and popping noise. Um. But as you lift the hammer up, all that remains is dust. I'm going to have you roll 11 d6, because there's six of them, and tell me how many ones you roll. <laughs> I got nine with me right here, and then I'll roll a few more. Nine, and then I'll roll two more. Uh, only two ones. Okay, roll two D one hundreds. All right. My favorite. We're just watching him smash rocks beside us. Delirium. <laughs> the first one is going to be twenty eight. Okay. The next one is thirty four. At least it wasn't okay. an eight. <laughs> As you breathe in the fumes of the smashed delirium. Um, you feel a rippling of wild magic in the air in the death throes of the delirium. The effects of these are pretty benign. Uh, for the next minute, all your spells with a casting time of one action have a casting time of one bonus action, and you maximize the damage of the next damaging spell you cast within the next minute. I'll say that these effects will linger, um, and you can trigger these, you can decide when these effects start, and we'll, for damaging spell, I will count a divine smite. Awesome. Oh, oh. So spells uh, with one action are a bonus action. Yep. For a minute. Yep. And uh, my next attack spell is what? Sorry. The next attack spell, damaging spell, or smite that you use is maximized. Awesome. Okay. Max. Uh, my friends. I might have a plan. I'm putting my armor back on as you explain the plan. Me too. We get the cart within half a mile of that there camp. We disable it and we leave the, the trunk in the back. We call them for help and tell them that we've been attacked. 
when they come over to help us, we ambush it. They're not here to help us. They're here to help the those glowing rocks. Now, we're sure that camp up ahead is where they were headed. It seems most likely, right? It's the it's like the next thing on the road, right? It's like the only it's, thing that's you would only be able to see it because of the campfires. If you were passing this during the day, it's far enough off the road that you probably wouldn't see it. Whereabouts are we on on the map? You guys are are a good now the equivalent of like a full day's ride outside of Drakenheim, probably about half half ways to Brocken Hollow. Half ways to Brocken Hollow. And I heard I heard them mention somebody by the name of the snail. So we're looking for the snail and we're looking for this camp. I like your idea. What if lose the horses? We we disable the the car and we 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 tell them that we, we signal that for help. Maybe we light a small uh, signal fire. Try to or lure we could them just out. set the card on fire. It also works. <laughs> and create I mean, a little bit of a, a commotion. A guiding flame, if you will. Hide in the bushes and see who comes and see if we can uh, persuade them. If we park the cart, yeah. We just have to act quickly. And by persuade them, I mean... Persuade them with our... With our good looks and pointy weapons, yeah. (laughs) The Gorman could catch us at any time. I ain't too worried about him. He looked uglier than he did when we first met him. Yeah, but they may have magics with them that help him out in that regard, so... We don't know what kind of shape he's going to be in if he at least alerts them, too. It's the other thing to think about is he could let them know, even if he's injured, what we are what we look like and, and what we're all about. They know who we are representing. Might make it a bit more tough to just walk in there. Yes, it's a shame a few of them got away. This could. We all need to be ready for all we know. That camp could already know we're coming. But when they see the fire of the cart, maybe they'll come check it out. Maybe at least a, that, cu- a few of them, yeah. And then we can ask some questions politely with my flail. <laughs> so, Monty, the, the, the road, the main road, how far into the woods is this uh, camp? It, it would be on the edge of the roads along the rocky escarpments north, uh, just just to the west of the road. Uh, judging by the distance of the flames, it's probably about a mile or two off the road. Okay. Well, let's get to it then. I guess we better start riding. Mm-hmm. So you're going to, are you guys going to light the cart on fire? Or are you just going to ride towards the camp? We're going to ride it closer to the camp, I think, and Get then light it on fire. as close as possible, yeah. Lose okay. the horses, take them away, light the cart on fire, <laughs> create uh, create a lot of commotion. Now, do we um, want to... We said it's already nighttime, right? Uh, it is indeed already nighttime. I'd yeah. say our best bet is to do it while it's dark and before the sun rises. Okay, I will bring you all over here then. I need to heal cinnamon. So this, uh, if you <laughs> if you zoom out, you'll get a really nice view of what this whole campsite looks like. So this is kind of what you're looking at here. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. So I say okay. we we park the cart like right at the edge of the map, although there's not really anywhere to hide. Well, this is what you see. So there's a small dirt path that is leading up to the campsite itself. And they've built it on the top of a little bit of a hill overlooking the the area. It's pitch blackout, so people wouldn't be able to see you approaching through the the fields themselves. Um, But they are up on, on a woody hill and they've built a rough palisade around the camps. There's uh, at least 
a dozen tents, maybe a little bit more. And you can see, make out several large carts that are also pulled up in the camp. And looking through the flickering flames and over the palisades, like the, the, the palisades do somewhat mask the flames. Um, but the, the, the kind of the corona of light that the whole camp gives off is what makes it visible from the road itself. Um, and, and so you're too far off to kind of hear anything going on inside the camp. Um, but you can detect signs of movement and the, the fires them, themselves from the distance. You know what? I've got another thought about our plan getting close to the camp is that there might be more of them to support if we get into a, a scrap. Could we keep it further off the road, further from the camp, but still light a pretty big fire to bring maybe a scouting party to take a look? Perhaps. Maybe I can uh, cause a little uh, distraction. And uh, I'm going to start, <laughs> I'm going to pull out my, uh, my trusty blue guitar. And if we uh, if we create this fire, I can have you two hide and ambush them when they uh, when they get too close. Oh, it's as good as plan as any. Um, I, re I reckon it might not work <laughs> as planned, but to help, uh, I'm going to make y'all visible. All right. That I just hope you come. Quite a bit. I just hope you come, come grab me when they get too close. So I, I want to put like a, a like a hood over myself, and I'm gonna start playing my guitar really loudly as we light the the <laughs> the. But pretty far away from the camp. Okay. Right? Like on the edge of the woods, probably about half mile away from the camp. Okay, like a half mile away from the camp. Okay. So yeah, that that would be a fair distance away, but that's fine. So you're you're gonna park the cart, light it on fire about half mile away, hide in the bushes nearby in the fields, and hopefully draw somebody out to investigate. And I'm I'm basically gonna be playing my guitar loudly, yelling, "Help! Help!" Okay. Um, as you bring the cart into position and get the fire rolling, I want each of you to roll me a d6. It's this four. Six. Four. Okay. One of you rolled the six? Yeah. Okay. As you're pulling the cart into position, straggling along with a, on a single horse, the boar, are the gore man, crafty Lil, and the other surviving rider. Limping along back towards the camp. Perfect. So are they are they coming right up to us? <laughs> They're heading towards the camp. They it's dark out. Ambush so and you guys haven't started the fire yet. So they don't know Ambush. you're there. Let's take them, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um um uh, <laughs> I say we just confront them. Go for it. Do they look still pretty beat up? They look awful. Oh my god! I, oh. I step out into the road. Hail and well met, friends. Oh hell! <laughs> no heaven. Seems this. We're about to bring day, the hell. <laughs> seems this day has been a little bit of a drag for you, son. <laughs> Get it? You guys, you guys get it? Get it. <laughs> uh, ass, that's Cra Crafty Lil speaks up. I still got a few spells left. Yeah, that's great. I still got a flail with your name on it. You try to cast a spell. You guys don't look too good. I feel fine. You want to take that chance? They look at it. Roll an intimidation check. <laughs> Eighteen. Crafty Lil looks at the other rider 
she says to she says they killed Mac Douglas they got the Smith they got them all we're we thought we had we should have killed you when we had the chance I say you throw down your weapons and kick them on over here well you're at it you can all remove your armor as well what are the chances that a bunch of you are going to show us the same mercy that we showed to you? Hmm. Pretty good, because I got questions, and we are holy men. And holy men are men of their words. Now, if you answer my questions, I will let you walk the other way. He drops the... He actually doesn't have his mace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere back. He puts his shield down. The, the the other rider who um is uh will will go by the name of rotten Robbie um <laughs> he uh he throws his bow down and you ma'am spellcaster you got any sort of focus or materials that you want to toss on the ground here she throws her wind in front of you very good. Still got a few other tricks up my sleeve. You can't take those away from me. Make sure to gag her and bind her hands. I go up and I do that to her. Right. So what's the business then? Hmm. Well, I just want to know where these rocks were headed. Must have been this camp here. What sort of business were you up to? Where were you taking them? Where were you selling them? Who were you selling them to? Who's the snail? You can answer those one at a time or sum it up for me. You shiny tin cans are messing around in the queen's business. You're going to answer to her before long. The way I see it, any queen of uh, Drakenheim is going to fall eventually. You didn't answer my questions, sir. We just bring it here. The snail sees it off from there. Takes it north. Think he's got a buyer up further ways. Is the snail working for the queen as well? Always needs a couple on the outside. You think he... But... He's only one of a few. Why does the queen want these demon rocks shipped out of the city? Why wouldn't she be using them for herself? Because money talks. Hmm. Looks like we might have questions for the snail. You guys got any other questions for uh, Mr. Ugly here? Face Miss looks pretty beat up. Mr. Ugly, what does a snail look like? A snail is a thin little slimy man. Wears a coat all covered in silver buttons. Good. And he's here in this camp. Usually. Runs the whole thing. Are they expecting you specifically? Or are they just expecting... Riders to show up with a delivery. Me and a few others. There's a couple of us that make these runs. Hmm. What do you think? How, how long have you been doing What did these? you do with the rocks? We're keeping them. These are our rocks now. And there's been there'll be no more shipping rocks in Drakenheim under the order of the paladins. You know, the way I see it, you try to block the queen from doing her business, she'll come for you in time. My friend, we have an army, and we are here to cleanse Drakenheim. And if the queen or anybody else tries to stand in our way, they will feel the wrath of the one true light. 
Ugh. You might be all fine and shiny, but that city will swallow you whole. The whole lot of you is gonna die in there. That may be the case, but we will burn it to the ground, sir. And we will die in the name of the light, and that is the most honorable way we can go. If it happens to take our lives and Cinnamon's life, then so be it. If you're looking to give your life for something, you ain't going to find anyone. You're going to find lots of people that are willing to oblige taking it for you. Well, here's what I want you to do, sir. First of all, do we have any more questions? Because I'm about to I'm about to wrap this up. If you guys have more questions. No, no, I think I'm, I'm right. good. You good? What? You what? All right, I'm all right. Here's what we're gonna do, sir. I said I'm a man of my word, and I said if you answered my questions, I would let you walk. I want you to walk back to Drakenheim. I want you to go back the way you came, and I will watch you. These other two. They did not answer our questions, and therefore, they can be purged by the light. So we will be taking them with us. And you, friend, I will watch you walk the other way. And you go back to your queen, and you tell her that the Silver Order is claiming Drakenheim, and that we are going to cleanse it and make it better. Fair enough. Turns to... Crafty Lil. It was nice knowing you, Lil. Better luck on the other side. And he turns and he walks back. And Lil is screaming underneath the gag that you put on her. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm going to throw Lil and the other one into the trunk. Just going to throw them in. Okay. Kind of jam them in there. Close the lid. In the trunk. Do, do we continue with the plan? And... and, and, and... Well, do we we'll, light it on fire? We will find out next time because that's where we're oh, going yeah. for the night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Oh, what man. a reversal this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Coming for you, the snail. What a reversal. Wow. I, that, you know what? Hilarious. This is probably one of the most cinematic. <laughs> episodes of, of D and D that I've ever played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Like this was straight up a, a action movie western. Yeah. yeah. I, oh man. <laughs> I really turned. I I was surprised that you guys got taken down, and then when you got a way to found a way to get out of that, well done. Because uh, I uh, I was. I was like, so ready to roll up new characters for the second part of this? Yeah. <laughs> we send I mean, a I new die, crew. I did die twice. You know, but Cinnamon and, didn't die at all. <laughs> you know what I've decided one of my favorite things in D&D is? Being stripped of all of my belongings and then having to fight my way back. And yeah. it's great. That, it I felt fun. cool pushing a bugbear of off moments. of a cart. And grab like his mates. Destroying a cart and four horses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, awesome. Man. Well, uh, that is where we are going to wrap up for the night. Um, a giant thank you, as always, uh, to our amazing cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for, for playing along tonight. Thank you. And a huge thank you to Monty Martin, our dungeon master, who not only prepared a wonderful episode, but also had to definitely improv his way out of our terrible, insane <laughs> decisions. So thank you, Monty, for being so good at dealing with our shenanigans and still running a fantastic game. It's just at the halfway point, I was just looking at all my notes and I was like, well, these are worthless. <laughs> Oh man, uh, yeah, that was great. That was uh, really well done. Uh, great, great work on on you all for uh, for thinking your way out of that one. Um, so uh, with uh, with that, um, all of our, our thank yous, of, of course. Um, the uh, all of our videos and 
everything we do on this channel are made possible. Uh, thank you to the generosity and amazing support of our Patreon supporters. Um, if you do enjoy our work, our live streams, or our YouTube videos, uh, please consider becoming a patron of our show. Uh, you can find it by following the links uh, in the description below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Uh, we also have a phenomenal Discord community. So if you are joining us on Patreon, you can jump into our Discord where we, you can actually hang out with all of us and chat with us. And um, we're going to be starting a voice chat option, I think, soon in there, uh, where we'll actually be hanging out a little bit more often, we hope, as often as we can. And you can actually come just chat with us, hang out, and talk about Drakenheim and D&D and anything else you want. And tell us uh, all of your thoughts and feelings about how tonight went. And, you know, it'll be Can't fun. Can't wait to so see the Dragonheim, <laughs> Dragonheim spoiler channel. It's going to be great tonight. Also, the yeah. memes. There's there's always memes yes. from every episode. So good. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the uh, the first thing that we have coming up for our patrons is uh, uh, the the kind of the heart of our our Patreon is our Discord community. And now every uh, every month on Mondays on our Discord community, we're going to be running a uh, writer's room voice chat with Kelly and I, where we're going to be talking about the upcoming episodes that we're working on for YouTube, um, talking about uh, all the cool things that we have coming up and just having a, a chat that is just for our patrons. Uh, we're going to be doing some more live streaming here on Twitch as well. We're going to be doing a Q&A once a month with questions submitted by our patrons, patrons but everyone will get to enjoy that. Um, uh, and the the big news, of course, is that thanks to the support of our patrons, uh, starting this month, uh, Kelly and I are going to be posting not one but two extra videos on YouTube <laughs> per month. Uh, yeah. yeah, per month, uh, yeah. And, and that's Woo, been so uh, been made possible because uh, we've we've really uh, grown as a as a community, and we've had some amazing support from our Patreon. So as Kelly and I transition to doing this as a full time thing, uh, we're going to put out more stuff. So that's going to be super cool. Um, so yeah, so be sure to check that out. Uh, all the details are on our on our patron uh, are on uh, Patreon there as well. Um, of course, we have our usual videos that come out every Thursday. Uh, what do we got coming this week, Kelly? We are taking a look at uh, for everybody who's ever asked why do we roll d sixes during Drakenheim. We're going to answer that in a video about our homebrew system for random encounters, which is, in our opinion, a really well thought out and fun way to do random encounters that uh, really helps out with the with the way that random encounters can encourage the game. So yeah. that's coming out soon. Yeah. So if you've ever watched the show and been like, what is with this D6 thing that Monty has everybody doing? How does that actually work and what's going on there and how do I use that in my game? It's coming out on Thursday. So check that out. Um, yeah, and uh, Kelly, I think you got to tell us about uh, yeah, where you, to watch you the guys, show. you guys, you have to be sure to check us out live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And all of the videos and all of the episodes that we've ever created can also be found on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time back in Drakenheim.